start off with Mike Sullivan does not land the offensive coordinator gig with the Las Vegas Raiders. They take, I guess, potential reported candidate for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Cliff Kingsbury. Instead, I think that's an all star hire and I hope nothing but the best. I love that coaching staff in Vegas. I won't lie to you. The Antonio Pierce and Kingsbury alone kind of feels like you're playing Madden. I'm a big fan of it. He is still up for the offensive coordinator job with the New Orleans Saints. There have been a couple of people who have had second interviews. Not sure if Sullivan has been one of them. I mean, reports say now, early reports said he was not coming back no matter what. Now it says unless he gets an OC job, he is coming back. Are you kind of counting him as part of the Pittsburgh Steelers coaching staff as we stand right here? I am, quite honestly. Um you know, I don't doubt that any of the consideration for any of these OC jobs was real for Mike Sullivan, but yeah. um, it just seems like he's he's kind of a candidate, not the candidate for any team, um, mm-hmm. especially the Saints. You know, it seems like they're they're moving on a couple different guys. So as of right now, I'd kind of expect Mike Sullivan to be on the sidelines for the Steelers in 2024. Um, you know, hard to say what that really means. Um you know, it's it's the same. It's, it's yeah. a, I'm not going to say stale yet, but it's it's the same guy. Um, so don't know how much it's going to impact the Steelers in, in 2024. I mean, I, I'm sure fans might not look at it as the most exciting thing in the world just because the recent track record of quarterback play hasn't been great. It's all been kind of under, under Mike Sullivan's uh, direction. You wonder how much Arthur Smith is going to be involved with coaching quarterbacks and how much he can impact yeah. that. But um I guess stability, not the worst thing in the world. It's just kind of how you look at it and how you spin it. Um, I, I don't really know what to to make of the long-term impact of Mike Sullivan staying in Pittsburgh, but you know, if you want to spin it positively, stability is, is not a bad thing. Yeah. I think Sullivan's got a track record that holds up and, you know, he has had a lot of success as a quarterback's coach in the NFL with some, with some pretty big names and has had some pretty good success. Maybe it's not, You know, Sullivan as much as it is Kenny Pickett. Maybe it is Sullivan as much as it is Kenny Pickett. Who knows? At the same time, Mason Rudolph took a massive step forward this season. So you have to, you know, take that into consideration and say how much of that was Mike Sullivan. So I think it's back and forth. I think at the end of the day, if you were going to shoot for the stars and go get somebody crazy and bring him in and go, oh, okay, that was a name right there. Can't believe the Steelers got that guy. Cool. If it was going to be another just quarterbacks coach, Mike Sullivan's a good one. He's got a lot of respect. And he's got the experience that I think I think the coaching staff kind of wants, you know, like if you're going to make some changes, which we haven't really seen the changes that I think we expected to see this offseason. I don't know if Sullivan Sullivan would have been one of the major ones on my list. Are you surprised that we're at this point? Coaching staff seems pretty much filled. Arthur Smith signing has still not come out, which is I mean, at, at what point do you just start saying, OK, look, at I get you're in mobile, but. You know, somebody's got to be back to ink this guy to a contract. Were were you surprised that, you know, this is this is really it that just to, you know, for those who haven't been paying attention, the Steelers have cleaned house with their strength and conditioning coaches. They've moved on from a scout. Obviously, they lost a senior or assistant, excuse me, defensive backs coach Gerald Alexander. But that's been it. They hired a new offensive coordinator and there has been no moves of anyone else outside of Sullivan, who, if he gets an O.C. job, will leave the Steelers. Yeah, I mean, I am a little surprised. I mean, we heard Mike Tomlin say that changes were coming to the coaching staff. Um, I, The way he said it, I kind of assumed it was the Steelers are going to force changes, they are going to make changes, and really yep. all they've done, yeah, they flipped over their strength and conditioning staff, um, losing Alexander as well, but that was more Alexander's decision. I think he got a bigger job, yep. a better position. Um instead of kind of the Steelers forcing him out. Um, and then obviously the offensive coordinator, that was a position they already had to fill. Um, I kind of expected some bigger, some bigger positions to kind of be turned over. And that hasn't happened yet. Um, maybe I was just me- reading Mike Tomlin's words wrong, but I thought I kind of expected some bigger, more significant changes than, than what we've got so far. Yeah, I think me too. I, I didn't know where to expect it, but I thought names like Eddie Faulkner, Frisman Jackson, I don't know. The defense is kind of young. The defensive coaching staff is is a little young. I didn't expect many changes over there, but I did expect some offensive changes, and there were literally none outside of the <laughs> strength and conditioning that I guess you could you could toss in there. A bit surprised. 
maybe maybe this is the year. You know, this is like the final year of whatever. Who knows? Do you expect them? I mean, people have tossed out names like Mike Munchak to come in here and be like a senior offensive assistant with a name like Arthur Smith. You even think that's still on the table to hire? It doesn't even have to be Munchak. I don't believe it would be Munchak. Anybody, you know, do you think people are like, oh, you got to get a passing game coordinator. Do you think that's on the table with a name like Arthur Smith? I don't know. I I don't really expect it, quite honestly, because I feel like, I don't know. I feel like they have their, they have their kind of coaching staff set and sewn and, I, I do wonder if Arthur Smith is going to tell them, hey, like, I need to kind of bring in some of my own assistants. I need to bring in some of my guys to help me out. But um, I don't know. This feels like I feel like the Arthur Smith hiring um, and then kind of the the other ways that they've the Steelers have gone about this offseason in relation to their coaching staff makes me feel like they are kind of uh, I don't want to say safe. They feel comfortable with the coaches that they have. I feel like they're yes. not looking to rock the boat in any way, um, bring in too many voices or anything like that. Um, I thought if they were going to bring in any kind of, you know, a passing game coordinator or something like that, they, the, you know, Mike Tomlin would have kind of controlled that higher. I don't feel like they would have left that to Arthur Smith. I could be wrong and there could be more changes coming after they make, uh, make that hiring official with Arthur Smith. But I mean, the, the longer they drag their feet with this, the longer, or the more candidates come off the board, the more guys uh, are kind of picked up. Like, you know, Alex Van Pelt was a guy that uh, that had been floated as pass game coordinator. He's going to the Patriots. Yeah. It's, it's you know, guys like that are being snatched up, and you're just left with fewer and fewer options the longer you wait, which leads me to believe that they're not very concerned about uh, the guys that are being snatched up and filling other positions. Because, the other, I mean, the other thing is they moved quickly on Arthur Smith. You yep. know, like, why would they not move quickly to – I mean, reportedly move quickly on Arthur Smith. They haven't actually signed him yet. But, um, <laughs> There's no deal in place yet, but yeah. Yeah, no, right, I so. agree, though. I agree. I, I I think at this point, they've it's like almost come to a screeching halt, which I didn't anticipate, I didn't expect. But just like you said, the names, like what names are still floating out? Like I have a hard time coming up with one to say, oh, well, that would still be a good passing game coordinator if he came in here. I also don't think that the Steelers are thinking that way. I mean, and I, and they could be, but... I kind of started to dig into Arthur Smith a little bit more and some of the stats around this guy when it comes to throwing the football pretty good. Didn't expect them to be good, but they were a little bit impressive. Like people are freaking out about, oh, well, you know, he he only did so much or or he did nothing with Desmond Ritter. Maybe he can't develop a quarterback, which I think is a little still up in the air because his options were. Ryan Tannehill and then which who was already developed and he had a good season with and then Desmond Ritter who may not turn into anything ever in the NFL like he might be the equivalent to Kenny Pickett and you know that's not really a lot to like at the same time are you like judging Mike Sullivan saying oh well he couldn't develop Kenny Pickett so he's terrible it's like eh, I don't know about that one yet at the same time you know you gotta you look at guys like dude his his good year in Tennessee like the year that AF that they went to the AFC championship game A.J. Brown and Corey Dillon combined for 200 targets. They both were 1,000-yard or, or near 1,000-yard receivers, 10-plus touchdowns. Like, they had ridiculous seasons. And, I mean, that's pretty impressive. So maybe he does know how to throw the football. I have no idea. You know, I, I've, I've, I'm still diving into as much Arthur Smith as I can. But there's just, like, a part of me, the more I do more research on this guy, the more I'm like, you know, I, I kind of don't get the vibe that this is going to be a, and a collaboration of let's just make the ultimate offensive staff. I kind of just feel like it's going to be Arthur Smith as the dude and they'll just let it rock. And then they'll use everybody else the way that, you know, they've been using everybody else. I am a little surprised that that other coaches haven't gone anywhere, you know, in that aspect. But when it comes to actually hiring a pass game coordinator, I don't know how surprised I actually am on the other side of the football. There were two big names. Bill Belichick's not coming to the Pittsburgh Steelers. We could scratch that one. But there were two big names that did not get head coaching gigs that people expected to get head coaching gigs. That was Bill Belichick and Mike Vrabel. Vrabel's name we tossed out there right the day he was fired. We were like, we should probably, the Steelers should probably hire Mike Vrabel as a senior whatever. And obviously we had to wait it out. Somehow it's worked out in the way that we have said it was going or could work out for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's still floating out there, man. What are you even hesitating to say, hey, make him a contract offer, bring him in as a Brian Flores role in 2024? No, not at all. I mean, he should absolutely be pursued for for a job like that. Um, yes. 
I mean, if he like I I say, you know, if he would take it, but I also thought that he wouldn't even consider a job like that uh, before, like when he was fired. I I assumed that he was going to be a head coach somewhere. Um, yes. and I don't really know why he's not, to be quite honest with you. No. Um, so I'm I'm still kind of my head's still spinning from that a little bit, quite honestly. So yeah, if you can get Mike Vrabel, you go get Mike Mike Vrabel. It's really not not a question of ability or anything. You don't. I, it's a guy that I'm not even sure you have to like really seriously interview if you're the Steelers. It's more about, <laughs> hey, do you want to come here? Yeah, hey, Mike, you want uh, to come to yeah, Pittsburgh? Right. It's a it's a pretty one way <laughs> one way street there. Um, yeah. If if Mike Bravel wants to come, the Steelers should want him to come. Um, so, yeah, I I'm. You know, not like I, I don't know how much an assistant like that would get paid or anything, but I think you almost write him a blank check and say, yeah, we'd love to have you here. Um, yeah. 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 Agreed. Agreed. And I don't even like I don't know where that comes out. I don't know. I don't know the finances of coaching staffs and where it comes from and all that. Art Rooney makes a billion dollars a year. Go sign Mike Frable. You know, you're not you're not sweating about the couple mil that you got to pay this guy to make your defense that much better. And if you make the Super Bowl and go on a run and have one crazy defense, chances are you're going to make more money because people are going to buy jerseys and come to games and so on and so forth. So it's all going to work out in your favor anyways. I agree. Vrabel is a dude. It was so unrealistic when we were talking about it the first time. It was like, there's no way this guy's not going to He's probably going to be the first coach hired somewhere. There's just no chance. The way that the coaching carousel has worked itself out is, is a little wild to me. Like you... All the names that we talked about the first time we talked about Mike Vrabel, almost none of them got head coaching jobs or took head coaching jobs. Uh, they were all just like, no, nah, I'm going to stay where I am. And then the big ones didn't go anywhere outside of Jim Harbaugh. So the fact that Vrabel didn't get a job wild to me, easily calling him if I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know if he'd come here over New England. I don't know if New England's going to consider him. If they're not, the Steelers should call him and say, look it. You should. Could you imagine Arthur Smith, Mike Tomlin, Arthur Smith, and Mike Frable in the same building? I mean, especially if Arthur Smith grows his mustache back, the motivation that comes into the Pittsburgh Steelers locker room on a daily basis would be on. That would just be unreal. That would just, just be the, unreal. The juice in that building every day between Mike Frable and and Mike Tomlin would be unbelievable. Like unbelievable. It, yeah, just two like There's, Energizer bunnies. I feel like. <laughs> There would be holes in the wall everywhere yeah. just from people just running through them. It would be crazy. It would be it would be crazy. I think that's the easy answer for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Will they do it? Who knows? But I didn't think they would do it with Brian Flores, and they did. And I think that they I think they saw good results there and they'd like to I would be more open to that. I, I would be more open to that idea as somebody who covers the Steelers as a realistic option more than I would anybody on offense because they've done it before and I think they could uh certainly do it again.